Welcome back to Footy Classified. Stephen McBurney is an umpire of 401 games, four grand finals, has been out of the game now since uh, 2011. In that time, he's been the commissioner of the Australian Building and Construction Commission. A tough job, all about integrity. They don't uh, muck around in that business. And before that was a prosecutor with the Victoria Police. He's all about integrity. I sat down with him today to talk about the future of umpiring in the AFL. Well, Steve McBurney, welcome back to umpiring. Great to be back, Eddie. Why are you back? Look, I've always had a passion for umpiring and the opportunity to head officiating at the AFL was just too good to pass up. I've always been impressed by you as a umpire of integrity, but as a man of integrity and somebody who literally day to day went in and did the heavy lifting for the state of Victoria. What of that will you bring to this new position in umpiring when integrity is becoming a very, very big issue? Sure, Eddie, in the roles I've held for the Commonwealth and state, integrity has been central to the role, but it's being impartial, it's being professional, and it's being apolitical. Integrity is the cornerstone of any officiating, but it's really the professionalism that the group currently delivers. It would appear from the outside that a lot of the rules now are to mitigate potential future litigation, i.e. concussion and the likes, which adds another layer on. Do you concede that that's an issue that you guys have to address? Well, I don't think it is for the umpires, Eddie, because no, they the can't rule makers, be, yeah. The rule makers, yeah. absolutely. But for the umpires, they're not thinking about, will this result in a concussion or will there be litigation somewhere down the track? They're just trying to pay free kicks yeah. and they're trying to pay the right free kicks. Should the game protect the umpires by being harder on players fudging for free kicks? We're seeing players now stick their head out like a turtle and and hit the ground to get a free kick. Oh, look, Eddie, I think it's the thing I've noticed the most since I retired. When I umpired, a high tackle was a high tackle and there wasn't the shrugging and there wasn't the ducking and the dropping at the knees. Our umpires have to adjudicate that on a case-by-case mm. -case basis. Players, as part of their art, are looking at how do I milk a free kick or how do I get a free kick and uh, we just have to adjudicate that as fairly as possible. What's the biggest issue that you look at and say, this is where we have to be really careful and what we have to stamp out as far as integrity in the game is concerned? Clearly for me in umpiring, it's integrity and impartiality. And we've got very strong integrity measures within the AFL and they are designed to protect the integrity and reputation of the game. And so the umpires are acutely aware of their reporting obligations. Um, they're acutely aware of their responsibilities around Brownlow and they're acutely aware of um, betting is a no-go zone. They can't bet on football. They can't be in a tipping competition. They can't do dream team. They all understand that and that goes to every official who has a game day role. Do, do umpires get drug tested? Uh, umpires do not get drug tested. Is that something we should bring in for, for their safety as well? So, Eddie, I don't think it's it's viable to drug test umpires and officials. I don't know of any other officials in any other sport. And the drug testing regime is really designed around athletes competing at the top level to ensure it's a level playing field. And I'm not sure that drug testing umpires is going to assist with that. Should we lose a rule if we bring a new rule in? Is it just, are we just going from a game that used to be regarded as a game without rules to a game now that has more rules than the Australian Tax Office? The rules is a constant challenge for umpires and what I'm really keen to do is simplify the rules, particularly for our grassroots level umpires. AFL umpires with their professionalism can cope with whatever rules and interpretations are put on them, but we have to simplify the game for the kids umpiring under 12s and trying to understand the complexity of what is a really fast moving game. What's the rule that drives the umpires mad? I think the one rule that is difficult for them to come to terms with is dissent because they uh, want to manage the situation on the ground and they really only want to use that lever for something that's clearly crossed the line. And when an umpire is concentrating on so many things in the game, he might not see the, uh, the player waving his arms around or pointing at the scoreboard. And so that is a tricky one which we continue to coach them on. Well, Stephen, good luck. Um, I think it's been an inspired choice by the AFL. I've been lucky enough to watch your career as an umpire and didn't agree with every decision you made, I must admit, but 
to watch it and also watch you in your in your real life activities and uh, you are no doubt a man of great integrity and we wish you all the best thanks for your time Ed. good luck mate. cheers stephen mcburney uh new sheriff in town mm. and uh, i get the feeling that he's going to be absolutely straight up and down in, in sorting a few of these things out and might be sending a few rules back to the afl to adjudicate rather than just having to take it he the other things that he was saying he's working very hard on finding the uh, uh, the accommodation for the umpires to have a home base. They think they've got the right coaching base, they just need a training base, uh, which isn't too hard to find, I wouldn't mm. have thought. So that's something that's on the agenda. But uh, he's very much about the integrity and protecting the integrity of the game. Yeah, well, I hope he uh, uses the remainder of this season just to get his feet under the desk and then make the changes that he clearly wants to make. I thought he was quite open there, Ed. Yeah, uh, he Really is. open there. Yeah. And very keen to continue that way as well. Yeah. And he's got the presence to be able to do so. Uh, roll the videotape. This was one from last week. I asked him about this. Uh, the free kick or non-free kick against Scott Pendlebury, he said that under the current interpretations as set down by Steve Hocking when he was the general manager of football, out of the centre bounce, if you kick it forward, so not square or backwards, it's not intentional. Right. He said that will change yes. probably next year. But I think he's a maybe of my thinking, and that is if you're the half-back flanker for Carlton, get up on the 50 and you can read the play and get the ball. Bounce three times, stop complaining. Is that, no. what, you, is that what you think he said? No. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was a smart kick. Like, yeah, even if it yeah. does go out, yeah. it's still mm. insufficient. But it was, it was uh, insufficient. Oh, he knew exactly yeah. what he was doing. Yeah, <laughs> it was. They know that that's what Colin would do. Yeah. Read the play. What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Oh, but I just out. hope that he gets the opportunity to lead the way he wants to lead. I see, like, one minute we're sending everything upstairs. The mm. next minute, we're not sending anything upstairs. I just feel like that even though they're given key roles, that people from above are telling you really what needs to happen. One thing he did mention mm. was there's an explosion of kids umpiring at junior levels. We've been hearing this forever that it's dying out, and it's great. So we've got to get all those things lined up for the good of the game. But I think I like this idea of minimising some of the complexities of the game that have come in in recent times.